would be honored if you would join us. Two, one, and we are live! Welcome to Hoshi's Cineastic Corner. Today's topic, Star Wars, together with my good friend Oliver Storyteller. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. Very good, very good. And today's topic, Star Wars, and we're going through, like George Lucas say it, says it, the complete saga. And, and, and I love it how he says saga and not saga. So that's, that's <laughs> pretty cool. And yeah, um, but let's start off with a little bit of an, of an introduction. How did you get hooked on, on Star Wars? Uh, it was uh, at the sandbox near my home. Uh, I think it was in, in early 1983. Uh, we were playing with our matchbox cars in the sand and suddenly one of the boys in the neighborhood uh, showed up and he had three action figures. I didn't even know that action figures exist at that time, so it was a brand new toy. It was so far apart from everything we knew until then. So we had Lego, we had Playmobil, we had, of course, Matchbox and so on. But those figures, they were so shiny and every boy in the vicinity was sitting around those three figures and it was like the Holy Grail. <laughs> um, nice. And, and, and uh, I learned from, from Marco, that was his name, that it was the uh, were figures of an actor of a movie called Krieg der Sterne or Star Wars uh, in English or in the original. In German, it was called Krieg der Sterne at that time. And it was Darth Vader, a stormtrooper and an imperial officer. And it was like, wow. And my father, he got home every day at 3.30 in the afternoon. And the first thing <laughs> I asked him, can we go to the toy shop and buy some figures I needed? <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 no. And at about six o'clock, I had him at the point that he would go with, uh, would drive with me uh, to the toy shop. And at that time, the shops closed in Germany at 6.30. So we had only 30 minutes left. And we got to the shops and I showed him, oh, that's the figures Marco has. They are so great. And he said, if Marco has these figures, you don't need them. Pick someone else. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's really awesome. My father in his eternal wisdom. And um, I chose these two. They were the start of my personal private collection. They were the beginning of the saga for me, or Sega, whatsoever. And this started it all. So Luke Skywalker on uh, Hoth and, an Ibir uh, and, and a rebel officer from Hoth. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, for me, it was, was straight, to, straight to the movies, which was uh, fantastic. Um, uh, which which uh, which was I was really glad. Uh, my my brother actually took me to. It was I think 1984. It was like a rerun in this in the theater. I was 10 years old and and uh, you know you mostly saw kids movies at that age. And then you're going into this because no one knew what it was like. And uh, yeah, it was really awesome. I was really blown away by it, and mm -hmm. and was was hooked ever since. So yeah, I. S and and that that was a really really great experience so um yeah that's that's how i got into the whole saga of star wars and now of course really great um there is loads and loads of movies and yeah so we'll do a little bit of a dive into the movies and as i said we're we're going a little bit by um when the movies actually showed in the theaters and not like the um, timeline of the movies um, and so the first movie we all saw and we all got to see was the original Star Wars or A New Hope what it was called later and I have to, to object uh, it was my first movie it was the second one I, I saw to be to be okay, uh, okay. honest yes the first one was Return of the Jedi in the movies when it came out in, in the ah, German okay. in, in late 1983 uh, because the first one wasn't released on VHS at the time so uh, there was only little chance to see it uh, in, on, on a TV at the ah, time because oh, VHS see, was I brand see. new 
Yeah, it was brand new in Germany VHS. So we we got one at, at late uh, or uh, during 1983, and I think it was released for VHS in 1984 around something. And it took a while to get it because it was overbooked at the mm, time. So yeah, yeah, I see. if you went to the rent store every week, every week they said no, it's not available. So you have to wait. And it took me weeks, months, and it felt like years. Yeah. But the, the first movie in the theaters, um, yeah, the start of the saga, um, A New Hope, and I think really an absolutely awesome movie. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, um, the thing is, um, what what I really think about the movie is, it's 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 such a classic because. Um, basically, it's it's a scoundrel western Clint Eastwood story with a princess, samurai story or you, samurai you story, samurai. yeah, <laughs> exactly samurai story with a, with a princess wo woven into the whole thing, and undoubtedly with the with the best villain of all time in Darth Vader. So um, yeah, that that really took me in into into a new hope, and um, there is. Not not really a flaw I can I can see in that movie. So um, I don't know if if you can see some flaw in in the whole movie or um, yeah. what do you think about it. In terms of storytelling, of course, there are a couple of flaws uh, because uh, the, the movie was kind of rushed in the end and, and George Lucas, he ran out of money. Uh, he had uh, big trouble because he did one big movie before. It was the summer hit he uh, was doing uh, one or two years before. So this reputation, he was a newcomer and many people thought it was a one-shot wonder. And... Mm. Uh, Star Wars. Every uh, most of the people who wrote this, uh, uh, read this story, thought this is crazy shit. You know, no one wants to see stuff like this, and only very few people believed in this. So, um, and especially uh, the first version, he showed uh, his friends like Brian De Palma and, and so on, and, and Steven Spielberg in a private theater. It was like, um, George, nice try, but this won't work. It was without the special effects, but mm -hmm. the, the, the footage uh, filmed um, and uh, a rough, a very rough cut. And the opening crawl was way too long, had way too many information. And Brian De Palma said, I'm going to rewrite the opening crawl for you so it's um, the people better understand what's going on. You, they don't need that much information you gave about the Sith Lord and the Empire and whatsoever. Only a little to start with. And then um, the, the, the first uh, version of the ending was like, um, oh, there's a Death Star somewhere out in space. It's potentially destroying planets like Alderaan, so let's go there and destroy it. Um, it didn't work because of the, the, the drama was not there. Mm. And they mm -hmm. decided to recut it so that the Death Star would attack Yavin base and the rebellion would be destroyed if they didn't destroy the Death Star first. Ah, so you got, you got higher stakes in the whole... Thing. Definitely. Yeah. And um, uh, first of all, his uh, uh, former wife, um, she was a uh, cutter. Mm -hmm. And she and two other guys, she re-edited the ending, so it's about the last half an hour. Mm -hmm. And this gave this movie the edge. This made it so brilliant in the end, and they won the Oscar for it, yeah, uh, yeah. For, the, for the editing. Yeah, yeah, the editing is absolutely brilliant in the movie, yes. And but what uh, what I think is also absolutely great um, is the whole cinematography, also of the special effects, because of course it was all uh, like um, mark uh, markups and miniatures and and all of that. Yeah. And and matte paintings and whatnot, and that was really really amazing. I mean, now today you have the special editions which has which has added CGI, but even the the raw version we got to see back then um, I think was really amazing in the cin cinematography of, of the special effects so that that was really mind-blowing and still would hold up today and of course with the added CGI it made everything a little bit nicer I know some hardcore fans hate it but 
Yeah, for uh, me, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it, it, it's not only okay, it's, it's, it still is brilliant because miniatures, yeah. if they are well made, uh, they age very good, very well. And that's uh, a problem with old CGI. If you have a look at the DS9 Star Trek uh, shows in, mm. from the 90s and you see the effects now, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, can watch very this. and that's why they redid it for the next generation, the Blu-ray edition. They had to uh, do uh, uh, new stuff uh, partially, and they would have to do all the stuff for DS9. Mm. And so that's that's the trouble. Um, and I think they did a brilliant job uh, back in 1977 or prior to it, 76, and they invented new technologies uh, to create or to bring this vision to life. And this is still. Um, 40 years later, amazing. Absolutely amazing. More than 40 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, and and then the um, the whole thing, of course, was the big success that it was, and and it all led led into Empire Strikes Back. Yes, yes, the Which, crown jewel. <laughs> exactly. For for me, still the best Star Wars movie ever made. I'm, yeah. It's my absolute favorite. Um, the the whole from from the beginning on Hoth uh, to to the battles on, on Cloud City, um, the the way Vader is portrayed as this really really evil villain, um, and then the twist of course that in in the story. And I hope we don't uh, make spoilers, but I think everyone has seen it now. <laughs> um, with with I am your father, this absolutely amazing. And it's one of the, the best movies in uh, yeah, best seen in movie history. Yeah, absolutely. Because you you see the, the the shock on Luke's face looks so real. Because um, if the story is true, he he didn't know. So um, it's it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, in, at that time, uh, the second part or uh, a follow up uh, movie of the first one of a huge success like the first Star Wars was, it was highly in doubt that the second one would be a success, a successful uh, at all or mm -hmm. even good. Yeah. So many directors refused to do it because they said we can never match the success of the first Star Wars. So it could only be a failure. And they had really. Con to convince Irving Kirshner, the director, he was one of um, the uh, professors or um, teachers of, of uh, George Lucas during his time at the university, and they really had to convince him, and, and his manager said, are you crazy? You ha have the chance to do another Star Wars? Just do it, come on, mm. whatever. Yep. And I think it was such... Um, a lucky move to pick Irving Kirshner and to have Gary Kurtz again as the producer uh, together with Harrison Ford um, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill it, it, it was this mixture because some of the dialogues were very bad One of the uh, some of the ones from the first movie were not good or brilliant, they were average to okayish um, but in the second one one it gained so much mm. and um i think uh this mixture of creators and, and and actors this was the 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 miracle behind it uh, to bring this uh to make th this to a magic potion mm. and and was what for me was was really really um awesome was the first thing i did not see the movie yet but i saw like a photo uh, of of yoda mm. and and um i i saw it was a puppet and 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 i was uh from from the set photo i saw uh in in the magazine back then i was kind of turned off by it and then when really? i and then when i saw the movie it drew you so in and the performance of of, of frank oz is so absolutely amazing um mm. that they made this puppet work is for me, absolutely astounding, and I, I'm the biggest Yoda fan you can, <laughs> now that that you can think of, um, even up until in, until the Mandalorian. Uh, every Yoda scene I absolutely love. It's this this character is so cool. It's it's absolutely amazing. I hadn't seen much of the movie prior before I saw it, so it was the last of the original tr uh, trilogy I watched, mm -hmm. but it could have been the first, because we were on vacation, my parents and I, when I was 
uh, seven uh, or near, I, I must have been eight years old um, uh, on at the Northern Sea in Ostfriesland, mm. and in the very tiny cinema they still showed The Empire Strikes Back, and I said, please, yeah. please, yeah. can I watch it? And they said, I know it's uh, twelve years old, you're seven or eight. Uh, uh, we don't allow it and it's too late we have to get home to our vacation site and <laughs> I backed and back but it, I wasn't lucky enough and so I had to wait until they released it on VHS and I think it was 1985 so I waited two years for this movie but the waiting had paid off it was so brilliant at that time mm. it was the best of all of the three uh, still it's not like the first or third one are bad or somehow no no they are good to brilliant as well but yeah but this really shines yeah definitely yeah the, the story and... the storytelling also i mean you you yourself for the viewers that don't know are you are a professional writer and yeah. and the storytelling uh, is so good in this movie it, yeah. it has such a flow there there are no length in it but there is backstory for everything it's absolutely yeah. brilliantly done did you know that ryan johnson didn't like empire strikes back when it came out the director seriously? of episode eight okay yes no, seriously. Didn't know he said i was disappointed everyone liked it but not me uh because of the ending and the cliffhanger and now there's okay. not cool yeah, um, we'll, we'll get to that movie later <laughs> yeah I, I know but it's interesting to it's know very this. interesting yeah because he said it in an interview, yeah, so yeah. it's very. Uh, uh, it's not not a secret. It's not not a uh, conspiracy theory. He said it in in an interview, and yeah. um, so I think uh, there was a lot uh, some criticism at the time because it was uh, was unusual to have this kind of an ending. Mm. Uh, people were used to have one movie about a story um, and have a an happy ending, and mm. then mm. another movie about the same characters. Mostly, it's the same story. Um, bit uh, uh, changed or uh, alternated mm. and having a third movie which is going to be less popular and so the, the series fades out. So this was the typical uh, series, movie series at the time mm. and George Lucas, he had this idea of this larger concept it should have been much more than three movies at the time so the Emperor shouldn't uh, uh, have had died in, in uh, Return of the Jedi we were coming to this soon so he had in mind to have much more movies like Flesh Gordon which was uh, 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 the intention um, for him not doing a TV show but mm -hmm. movies and so he, he put in this cliffhanger and of course some people at the time said oh this bullshit I'm coming off the movie and I have to wait three more years to have the ending of this movie mm. this kind of sucks but I think most of the people saw the potential and they said wait oh, in three years and I'm, I'm going to watch it and this is part of the attraction of the original trilogy in my point of view yeah absolutely absolutely because um, next movie of course Return of the Jedi um, it was it was a brilliant finale for me for this for this trilogy, um, and I even like the things in this movie that some people don't like, like the Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't people... question them when I was in when I was eight years old. They were yeah. perfectly okay. Yeah, exactly. When I was eight, <laughs> I never thought about them until I read some articles. I think in the 1990s. Oh, so they're for kids and they're banned. I think really. Yeah, yeah. Ah yes, uh, there might be something at it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think uh, it was brilliantly done. Return of the Jedi. I really liked that the transformation of Luke. That you saw that there was time. Uh, that it wasn't explained that there were how many years were between episode uh, uh, six and uh, five and six. Um, yeah. But but you saw the maturing of of Luke uh, in in the first. Uh, quarter with with Jabba the Hutt and everything and um, it, it immediately drew you in um, that he had this when you get the twist that he had this master plan how to free Han um, and that that was really really cool I think um, there I recently saw an interesting comment on Facebook uh, was a discussion about The Last Jedi and the criticism and someone said I love The Last Jedi because it's the only Star Wars uh, movie with some character development hmm 
Okay. Yes. Uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> they obviously, I did not see the original saga, but... <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what to answer to this, yeah. because yeah. Duke Luke is so different from episode 4 to 5 to 7. Exactly, In yeah. Four, He's this optimistic guy who was wants to go on adventure. On five, he's uh, already a battle-hardened pilot and not that optimistic anymore. He's more a realist. Then he meets Yoda. He's disappointed in the first place. He tries to catch up, and then he's um, uh, going into this battle with Darth Vader, not fully prepared. And then he sees that he has so much to learn, and he's mm. not uber. And then... Return of the Jedi, who starts very dark, and and may maybe he's the next Vader and, and, and whatsoever, and then this uh, finale in the showroom where he's willing to sacrifice himself, and Han Solo, of course, he has a great character development over three films, from the selfish guy to the bit more. Um, uh, 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 to the hero type uh, at the end of six, yeah, Carrie exactly. Fisher, Carrie Fisher or um, 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 Leia, she has the least character development of all three, because she's always the princess and the the revolution uh, 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 through all the movies. So yeah, yeah. if you say the female character development, yes, this is a bit, uh, uh, no, this not so much or not not that yeah, good. Yeah. But from the beginning, she was a very strong character. So she yes. was already very hardened in her, in her. Yeah, her character so. was already set up at this point. She was already what she is, and I admire for her. Uh, I admire her because she's a strong female character and a believable with flaws and strengths. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah like uh, one of our viewers wrote in the chat, the the original trilogy. Yes, it has some minor flaws in character development. But overall, the story is well told and the characters are really good developed. Even characters that are on the side and you get a little bit of backstory only, like you, you see Mon Motma once, um, you see General Akbar a few times. Um, but uh, also that characters became really lovable characters uh, through, through the first trilogy. Yeah, exactly. And even Darth Vader. What an what an what an what a development from this killing machine through episode four, five, and this uh, in the the final moments caring character who is mm -hmm. sacrificing himself and and doing the unthinkable thing, killing the emperor. Yeah, so thanks. even Darth Vader has a character progression. So yeah. I don't I, I don't understand what people see in in uh, or don't see in the original trilogy. Yeah, there's the snap back to to Anakin Skywalker. It's 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 really amazing. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's very well executed, yeah. That it's really this snap moment that draws even him out of the dark side. Even C-3PO has some character development. In the first movie, he says, "Oh, <laughs> true, I true. hate, I hate space flying or space travel or whatsoever." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in six, he says, "Finally, we're going on." Or in Germany, so endlich geht's wieder los. Uh, yeah, now yeah. we're moving. So yeah. even he has some kind of character. Exactly. Yeah, character exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very Come on. True. Very true. Yeah. And then there was a long pause, no movies. Yes. Um, of course, yes. there were there was some Evox movies and, and that stuff, but uh, that's not. I've seen them all. Yeah, that's not uh, containing to the saga. No, no, it was a dark <laughs> time. We had the Evox uh, TV show, yeah. uh, this cartoon. We had those uh, uh, real uh, um, uh, movies of for, of Evox. We have this unspeakable holiday show which came out i think in the end of 1977 or something and mm. it was really a dark time and always those rumors that there were more movies in germany um, my friends my the kids in my neighborhood they said there are more movies in the united states and they're not showing them in germany so we were <laughs> very angry about those secret movies we never saw maybe it was uh, the 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 uh, Christmas feature uh, and I'm glad I hadn't saw uh, I didn't see it at that time. Yeah, um, me too because um, we I was so impressed with the original trilogy and then uh, um, we were already building like Jedi costumes and and fake lightsabers with with uh, big mag lights and and stuff like that. <laughs> but but one 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 uh, valid or one good point, uh, the absence of official movies spawned. Uh, imagination and creation yeah, through video true. games, yeah. through comics, through books, novels, through games whatsoever. So Star Wars didn't die. So the fans 
they uh, they they brought uh, life to it or they they held it alive mm -hmm. very true very true and then of course the um, the the internet started and you heard rumors yes. that that there would be a new uh, star wars movie coming Uh, first, the special editions. It was amazing. Yeah, exactly. The special editions on VHS, absolutely amazing. Uh, so the yeah. announcement was amazing. So the special editions, we can yeah. argue about the changes. Yes, some are course, quite yeah. nice, some are not that good. But even to see them at the theaters again, at, at the big screen, it was like, wow. Yeah. At the time, which, which was really fun, I was uh, uh, when the rerun of Empire Strikes Back came out, um, I was studying in Bulgaria. And mm -hmm. and I got to see it in Bulgaria in, in original uh, tone and and with Bulgarian subtitles. And yeah. I still remember the the title. Uh, I hope I, I pronounce it right. My Bulgarian is really bad, uh, but it was Imperiata Odvursta na Udara. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds terrific. Do, do you know um, uh, how Empire, uh, Empire Strikes Back is called in the Netherlands? No, no, no idea. Um, um, oh my God! I have to look at. Uh, up uh, in the internet. Um, warte mal, uh, wait a second. Empire <laughs> Strikes Back Neverland. Um, heißt, heißt das? Dat Imperium knibbelt retour. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, awesome. <laughs> Dat Imperium knibbelt retour. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and the, of course, to see it in the movies again, it was was really great. It it was still mostly Dolby Dolby full frontal, but <laughs> but it was really amazing to see them. So that was that yeah. was really great. Yeah, and then of course we had the Phantom Menace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know? Or do you know the the story um, before Episode One? So how it started and why George Lucas did it? Um, no, not really. I saw I saw the making of, so I saw I saw a little bit of the beginning, but when they were already in writing and casting. But um, I I don't know the the pre story. But go ahead. Yeah, I saw bits and pieces. In 1983, when Return of the Jedi was almost released or already released, he gave an interview and he said, I, I feel like a slave to Star Wars and I, I don't want mm -hmm. to make those movies anymore. So he pressed everything uh, in third movie he wanted to do in the later movies. Um, uh, then he did, of course, uh, the, the Indiana Jones movies. He did the uh, Young Indy TV show, which was not mm -hmm. that successful. Um, only one season he did um, some uh, other movies one or two and they were not that successful apart from Indiana Jones um, in the 90s um, I think he was some kind of bored and a mixture of being bored maybe he saw he was running out of money because he had, still had this Lucasfilm empire Star Wars mm -hmm. Uh, toys were not selling good for a long time anymore uh, books and comics are not that amazing He has to sell toys, and um, the the studio or the the not studio 20th Century Fox. Um, 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 hilf mir mal ganz kurz, help me. It's not, the studio requested it from him, or or, or did they? Yeah, they, they asked him? him to do. They they asked they, him to ah, do they this. Asked him to do it. Okay. Yeah, because they were running out of money too. They had some flops in the past, uh, movies that were expensive but didn't pay off, and. Mm. Then they um, um, uh, lured him into the trap because there was uh, this new te ne technology available, the mm -hmm. uh, digital camera, the digital effects. And that's what makes made George Lucas tick because he was interested in those new features and he wanted to try it out. And so mm -hmm. this was his way into Star Wars again. So out of um, need for money, Maybe he wanted to do something with his life and not sitting around being the big boss of a dying empire. And Fox needed him and this new technology or those. Yeah, yeah. And um, I also heard that that uh, he, he like his uh, longtime friend Steven Spielberg like told him that, come on, uh, you see the, the the CGI effects that ILM now is doing for me. Um, Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jurassic Park, for example. Um, you can do it now. You can do real aliens and and all that stuff. So, I think that that was also a, a good encouragement for him. So. Yeah, 
but no one wanted to do the movie so he asked a couple of uh, of um, 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 uh, regisseur, um, directors and writers directors and... Uh, they didn't want to do it because uh, everyone was uh, fearing that it would flop like uh, like many people thought uh, Empire Strikes Back would flop mm -hmm. and so in the end he had to do it by himself so mm -hmm. in the first place he didn't want to do it and some people knew how he uh, uh, behaved during Return of the Jedi when this Marquand guy was directing mm -hmm. um, and he was not up to the task and Marquand uh, said in an interview Uh, doing Return of the Jedi uh, felt like uh, doing a movie to a Shakespeare uh, <laughs> play when Shakespeare in person is in the next room. Yes, it's a very good analogy. Yeah. So I think a lot of people said, no, 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 I, I don't want to do this. So the question would be, why was uh, um, uh, George Lucas behaving uh, different in during Return of the Jedi when he was uh, given free hand or more free hand to Irving Kirshner in Empire Strikes Back? I think George didn't have the time to look after the movie every day because he was uh, building up his empire at this point. He was a businessman. And, of course, Kirshner was his teacher before. Mm -hmm. So I think he had more, um, he trusted him more. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, and then when the, the movie released, uh, I think it had a great release um, because a lot, awesome of, release, a, lot, yeah. a lot of people, of, or, uh, of course, got, got to see the movie. And um, then a lot of like the hate for the movie started. I, I totally understand it because um, uh, I was waiting for this movie. I, I, I watched the trailers in the movie again and again. I, I got them on PC and I watched them many times on my PC as a ripoff uh, from, I think it was like this iTunes uh, uh, um, platform from Apple at the time. Uh, was uh, was uh, sucking up every bit, every piece of this movie, and of course uh, Darth Maul. Everyone was asking, "Who is Darth Maul, and what will his role be, and and who?" And then he has such a minor role in this movie, only three or four lines of text, and this Jar Jar Binks creature, and uh, it a young young Anakin. He didn't play out well he was too young not because of the actor the actor was fine he was doing great but Anakin was just too young to be believable in this role I think if George Lucas would have went with uh, Anakin Skywalker with the starting age of the same of uh, John Connor in Terminator 2 so a young teenager which mm. has already a mind of his own mm. This would be have been much more believable because he is too old. He uh, uh, is not uh, ready for it. Mm. He's too emotional whatsoever, and he could become Darth Vader. Yeah, that's but, true. That's true. But not any. Yeah, because the the whole I, I think the movie for me was still good. I still still enjoyed it very much, but it had it had like as you say it for me it had two major flaws. The first the first thing was. Um, the whole any story because of his age was a little bit too naive for me. And to part me, the, the yeah, difference. Exactly, yeah. The age difference no. with, with Padme. And um, then the middle, uh, of course, for the first time seeing the board race was great, but still the first time in the movie theater, it was too long for me. Really? Um, yeah. it was For me, it was a little bit too long. It's, it's. I think it's 15 minutes or something, uh, if I recall correctly, and and for me that was a little bit uh, of a long scene. I didn't actually mind Jar Jar Binks that much. I, a lot of people hated Jar Jar uh, so much, but for me Jar Jar was actually quite okay. Um, and um, f the the why the movie still is so great for me is um, the Emperor has quite few scenes in it but when he's on screen it's such an amazing presence um, I mean uh, for me um, a absolutely stunning actor performance if you can pull off this senator and then the emperor uh, in the same movie it's, it's absolutely yeah. amazing yeah the, the Ian McDiamond he's uh, one of the shining stars in this absolutely. movie absolutely 
I know, think Ewan McGregor was uh, totally underused yeah. in this movie and a yeah. bit young as well. But exactly. Ian McDiamond, he, he's so really shiny in this movie. Yeah. Uh, when I first heard that the former a uh, actor who played Palpatine in episode uh, three or uh, uh, six by now, Return of the Jedi, would play the same uh, person in, in episode one. I said, wow, he, mm -hmm. he must have must be very old and then i learned that e mcdermott was pretty young when he did the first uh, time exactly uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, palpatine in 1983 yeah. uh, but he was in the right age he was the right actor he was the right character so my my favorite line is wipe them out all, all of them, them. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely <brilliant. laughs> awesome yeah, absolutely awesome um but 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 one thing uh, one more thing um i had a rough start with episode one um I was really, really, really sick at home uh, because the, the movie was released in May in the United States and uh, in fall, I think around October or something in, 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 in Germany. And so we had a huge gap of around five months again in, in the age of the internet and, and ripping videos. This was a terrible decision by Lucasfilm and 20th Century Fox at the time. So um, I was a student and my girlfriend, she came home and waved around with the CD and said, do you know what this is? But you're not allowed to watch it until we've seen it both on the in the movies. Uh, it was in <laughs> July. And I said, awesome. you're talking shit. Come on. I'm, I'm one of the <laughs> biggest Star Wars nerds in the universe. I'm, I'm at home sick and you have the CD with the movie here. It's July and I should wait uh, three more months. You can't be serious. I think I, I I made it three weeks or something, and then I watched it. It was <laughs> awesome. really um, we had really a fight about this. She was so upset with me that I was watching this movie at the PC and said, "Come on, it can't be serious. You're bringing this home to me, and now you're you're mad at me because I'm watching the movie." It's like this a, a former alcoholic, and you place <laughs> a bottle of whiskey in front of him and say, "Don't drink it." Don't drink it. There's the glass, but don't drink it. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I watched it. I was sick, and I watched this in the kitchen because she kicked me out of the living room. I had put up my set up my computer in the kitchen. I walked the, watched this terrible resolution movie on this small monitor, and I think it was a rough start in the beginning. So. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But I think um, I saw it in the movies first, and. Um, for for me what what was was so great also and uh, probably why i forgave a lot of the story holes in the middle of the movie is uh, the whole ending the the final introduction of darth Maul, and and the final battle was for me the first time you saw like real yeah. jedi versus sith fighting uh, in the first couple of minutes when they fought the battle droids on this uh, battle yeah, uh, droid amazing. control ship this was this issue, the energy I was really, yeah. really happy about. The, exactly, I think yeah. the Jedi fights, some people don't like them. They say that's kind of ballet or something. Um, no, I think this was made absolutely right. And I still think the, the, the battle between Maul, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and, and uh, young Obi-Wan is the best lightsaber battle in all of the movies. Yeah, I absolutely agree because... Uh, in the later movies, they did a lot of, uh, in, in, the, in the prequel trilogy in the later movies, they had some lightsaber fights, but they were like, um, there were these faster cuts and everything. Uh, and of course, in, in the episode one, you had uh, Ray Park, uh, the stunt actor that played Darth Maul, um, with his, well, gifted performance uh, and with the with the, the strength and energy that he could bring in and a very choosed uh, Ian McGregor <laughs> in, in this did final you know fight that, scene. It's did amazing. you know that, that, that Ray Parks wanted to do an even crazier fight scene uh, and George Luke said, no, no, that's that's too crazy. Please do a more regular one. And this was <laughs> the regular one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was very satisfied. And I, uh, you have to love Ray Park for his performances. So, And I think um, Darth Maul was such a great villain that that's why they brought him back in like Clone Wars and the animated stuff because he's just too good a villain to kill to yeah. stay dead. <laughs> totally underused. So thanks yeah. to Dave Filoni, I, most of the times I don't like when they bring heroes or villains back uh, who died before mm. dramatically. I agree. I agree. 
but in this case it was uh, it yes was warranted. it was adept adept yeah. to the character Darth Maul yeah exactly yeah yeah and then episode one led of course into episode two attack of Ooh. the clones I, I I gave the movies uh, to my neighbors a couple of weeks ago episode two and three they mm -hmm. found episode one uh, likable and they brought me back both uh, DVDs and said they didn't watch episode three because they thought Chu was so lame. <laughs> yeah, the, the true story. That that <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. Um, the thing is, episode two has really really cheesy moments. Yes. Um, but some brilliant as well. And some some very brilliant moments. And actually, the 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 thing is, I really like episode two. Um, because of all the sinister brewing of the of the war that then breaks out in the in the final battle, um, and and the whole Jedi Order that is shown and and how it works and you you already see that this is so like in, indoctrinated and um, it has flaws. The whole Jedi Order has its flaws. It's not. It's not a perfect order. It's not like that. We are the good guys at everything. It has major flaws, and you can you start to see that, and that's really well made, I think. And the the only thing that really bothers me is um, what is really done in in the in the first trilogy, and even in episode one is um, the droids are the comic relief of of the movies. Mm. But in episode two, what really bothers me is in the final battle, there is too much of that. The whole C-3PO as an attack droid uh, thing, <laughs> that, 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 yeah. that, that, that was a real turn-off for me because it was too much. Yeah. This is, you can have, the uh, up until like the when, when um, R2-D2 flies around and helps them out in the foundry and stuff like that, that's, that's okay for me. It's uh, still a little bit comic, but... It works, but then when it gets to the final battle, it's just too much because there are dozens of Jedi dying and you don't get that uh, tragedy feeling because of that stupid scenes. I, I know what you feel. Um, same for me. Um, I think uh, episode two has a couple of really great moments, like the the, the fight uh, between uh, Obi Wan and and um, Jango Fett mm. on the platform on. Um, oh come on the, the uh, on, Com on Camino. Oh. Yeah. Camino, thank you. Yep. On Camino, this is one of my uh, all times favorite scenes, even awesome. if it had aged not that well. You see the G CGI. I have the mm -hmm. Blu ray editions. I have a Beamer uh, in my basement. Yep. And you see the CGI and you see the human actors compared to the CGI. So it's a difference. Mm -hmm. I think this episode in particular has aged bad compared mm, to the others. True. Even. Yep. Even episode one is better in terms of the visual quality because they use much more models mm -hmm. and, and real stuff compared to episode two. A lot of people think that they overused um, CGI in episode one. That's not true. If you see the making of, they, they use a lot of sets. And in a lot two, of miniatures. Yeah. Yes, they changed it. In episode three, they still used a lot of CGI, but the technology in those three years had improved uh, significantly. So three is still good looking, not brilliant, but good looking. Yeah, yeah. And of course, um, I, I, but for me, the cheesy scenes with with Padme and and Anakin. Oh, are don't mention it! Don't mention it! I'll <laughs> they are for for me. They are more forgivable because, um, yes, they are stupid. But even, uh, but at least in the age of Anakin, um, if you think back when you were 15, 16, you also did very cheesy things with girls. Yes, <laughs> but I don't want to see those scenes when I was exactly. 15 yeah. and having my first date with with a girl. I don't want to see them anymore. So yeah, yeah, now, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they you don't have... need to see it. Yeah. So this shows that... Um, uh, George Lucas, he's uh, building up great story arcs, he's uh, thinking of uh, great universes, but he's not a good writer, and he should have uh, seeked out help at this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I totally agree. I totally agree. 
Yeah. But for me, it turned around uh, with with episode three. Yeah, this was uh, surprising. Uh, yeah, with... I didn't have high expectations when I walked into the movies, and I was really um, uh, amazed and really happy. Uh, now, I, uh, at the time, I thought, "Oh, that's a great movie." A couple of weeks later, I said, "Yes, it's a good movie, but it's not brilliant." Yeah, it's not it's not brilliant, but for me, it's still the best best of the three. Best of the bunch, yes. Best of the of the prequel trilogy and. I actually really like the way it's portrayed, um, how energy, Anakin falls to the dark side. Because um, you really? can, you, yeah. Because um, let me get to the point. Uh, because I think um, you see in that moment that there is more working, at more at work than just uh, a normal character development. There is truly a dark force that switches him. And he's not he's not like slowly drifting or something like like a psychopath would or something like that or like a brainwashed like someone that that gets brainwashed over time but there is a switch and and I really get the the notion that that what uh, Obi-Wan says in in episode uh, 5 in Empire Strikes Back um, that Anakin ceased to exist in this moment is true and you can see that later in in in, in clone uh, in I think it was it's, it's in Star Wars Rebels and I'll get get to that um, that mm. Anakin ceases to exist in this moment and he becomes Darth Vader and that that his his personality really gets switched from the dark side of the Force and um, the the scene that I mentioned in Star Wars Rebels is when Ahsoka fights uh, fights Darth Vader and she cuts off half of his helmet. And looks in his eye, and you see on Ahsoka's face that she sees that her friend Anakin is gone. It's not Anakin that she's fighting. Mm -hmm. He has the yeah. face, but it's not Anakin. Yeah, but this character progression it was mainly uh, lifted by Clone Wars during seven seasons by now, and yeah, yeah, of true. course Rebels. So yeah. I, I think the character development of the sequel trilogy, uh, prequel trilogy, wasn't very good because I don't know if it was Hayden Christian, the crappy dialogue, or um, because uh, Anakin was too young in Episode One to start with. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it was it's the latter one, so he was just too young, and of course Hayden Christian and was not the perfect match for the character yep, there could yep. have been someone else another actor but um it it's not the the worst of the series not the worst element but it should have been the best yeah exactly exactly and, and it was it, far from it it has a few major flaws that really contradicted yeah, yeah. But there were really great scenes in it. I loved the fight, for example, with with the Emperor with with Mace Window. Loved that, loved that scene. And I, and that people are still debating if Mace Windows uh, really won or not. Or not. <laughs> if, so. if he if they could use his character, he's still alive. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. It's simple as it is. My my uh, my uh, moment, my golden moment of uh, episode three is, and what I still cherish is this uh, scene or sequence after he gave Order sixty six, and all those Jedi died, and, mm. and the music, and the different places, and all the Jedi's we had known only little but we saw them before and we see how they die and how Yoda reacts to it and this loss and grief so this really caught me in the movies and George Lucas uh, had this absolutely right and one more thing uh, to the prequels how can one Sith with one apprentice take over the whole galaxy, bring down not only the Republic, but the Jedi Order of thousands of Jedis through thousands of generations? And I think he got this right, so how Palpatine did this. This yeah. is the overall story arc, which I really admire. Mm. Having a good writer at his hand who could turn this into a good... Um, story um would have made movies. it even better yeah. even better and that's what i miss about the sequel trilogy so episode seven eight and nine we're coming to this uh soon enough but it's missing this completely yeah absolutely yeah. i i agree but and so you can 
the who prequel, the prequel trilogy still had this arc and, and yes. this foresight and that's what you said uh, George Lucas is really a visionary yeah um, who has the the end end game in mind um, no pun intended towards Marvel <laughs> and yeah. uh, but he he knew what his what his end game and his end goals were and he continuously worked towards this arc and of course a good writer would have pulled it off even better and I think a lot of the movie but got turned around and uh, I think Revenge of the Sith is still a very good movie for me is also what George Lucas really made well is the whole uh, cinematography of Revenge of the Sith was was far evolved from, from episode 1 and 2 and um it pulled me in more than than the first two prequels and and the the whole uh, mustafa sequence was was shot really really well in 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 my thinking yeah it was was technically made very well i it, it really got me hooked in yeah. when i saw it first time in the movies so but still episode one is my favorite battle but and this changed so much in this uh, in the sequel because Star Wars was uh, um, like a crown jewel to me because it was so different at the time. Mm -hmm. We had no movie arcs like the Marvel, Marvel uh, uh, MCU. And most of the movies were standalone movies with only a rough connection like Indiana Jones 1, 2, and 3. They have only a rough connection. We exactly, have yeah. Battlestar Galactica with a rough connection and, and even uh, a small story arc or small story arcs, and that's not correct. Um, they have a story arc, but it's uh, the movies are not that dependent on each other than Star Wars mm. are, uh, movies are. Uh, we had Aliens, uh, the series was crushed with Aliens 3. So mm. um, Star Wars stood out until 2005 as this unique creation of a saga of six movies who fit together. Yeah. And Very then true. there was Episode 7. Yeah. But before that, we thanks to, to Dave Filoni, we got the, the Clone Wars series. And and I think that was really really well done and really great executed. Um, yeah, the, the whole I'm receiving animation. it right now with my kids. Awesome, awesome. And I think, um, I mean, uh, I know you have you have two daughters. Uh, I think yeah. uh, it's it's especially getting uh, young female children into this into this whole. Uh, they, Star love Wars. Ahsoka. Yeah. they love Ahsoka. Ahsoka is such a <laughs> nice role model for them. It's absolutely yeah, amazing. Uh, I mean, I see, I see it when, when, um, when I'm with the 501st Legion. There are so many kids as Ahsoka. That's it's absolutely yeah. amazing, and it's not an easy costume to build to get in the 501st Legion. No, no, definitely. <laughs> but um, it's absolutely but, stunning. Um, the older this series gets, um, the more I admire it because uh, Dave Filoni, even though some episodes are cheesy um, and it's still for kids, yeah, uh, course, yeah. it still has this uh, cartoonish uh, sense of humor. Uh, the story ends um, most of the times in a happy end and the, the bad guys are shooting worse than the stormtroopers in the movies and so on and so on. So you, they, you can can say a lot of bad things about the show, but um we're seeing it now i i recognize what uh, this this is such a um, uh, um that this such a treasure mm. we have yeah. seven seasons of pure fan star wars yeah and so, uh, the the story arcs that really put pulled me in like the story with the with the father the daughter and the son and yeah it's it's so amazingly done and you get this rich background to the force and it's working and there is something more behind the all of it and the galaxy and how big the, the galaxy side, actually is the side stories i love those yeah. side stories about those clone troopers exactly uh, yeah. amazing yeah amazingly yeah. well done this is and i think not that's, only the heroes yeah exactly and that's because, also because you can allow uh, side characters to suffer to have a uh, failure the main mm. characters i know everyone knows obi-wan can't die anakin can't die okay ahsoka it's uncertain during the the show what mm. happens to her because she's not shown in the movies after this but the main characters mace windu yoda we all know they will uh, live at least until episode three 
Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but uh, the side characters are not. Yeah. But I think Dave Filoni is a, is a really great guy with this because I also uh, really enjoyed, uh, and we can swap into this for, for a short time before we get to the last movies, uh, in Star Wars Rebels, which I think is also a brilliant show. It's a very good show. I loved the first three seasons. The mm -hmm. fourth lost me a bit about this ghost wolves. Uh, I know this was because uh, yeah. Dave Filoni loves wolves. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but this lost me, and um, I like. It's a little the... bit too esoteric. The the fourth. Yeah, you know, too yeah. esoteric. That's not yeah. my cup of tea. Yeah. And in the end, I think the last the uh, finale was well made. I liked it, yeah. but yeah. there were men too many episodes I didn't like in uh, in in season four. Mm. But three was great, and two yeah. was good too. Yeah. Very good yeah. too. Yeah. And I, what I think is also the introduction and portrayal of of Admiral Thrawn was was done really well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I like his voice in German and English. Both are doing very well. Yep. And some people don't like the first season. And I said, this is a good starter. If you have two big adventures in the first place, what's to come after this? So they have to start small. And exactly, that's yeah. what he did. And really admire Dave Filoni for this because he said, I'm not going for the big galactic conflict in the first place. I'm doing the small things, the local terrorist or rebel cell whatever perspective you prefer would do on one planet and mm. i loved this of course yeah yeah and this whole thing hot mess led us into a hot mess of the force awakens um should we include rogue one before and, and solo or we're not uh, doing those movies uh, today um yeah i would include them but i, I have actually rogue one after the Force okay, Awakens because later it came on. Out, okay, yeah. all right, all right, okay. After the all right, Force Awakens. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Force Awakens. High expectations, the trailer. Exactly. The first trailer. I really like the trailer. I, I all like, of the trailers. Are I you love insane? Them. Yeah, I absolutely I love like. them. Yeah. It was absolutely like, amazing for me. It was like in episode one, this this first trailer, seeing it again and again yeah. and again and again and sure we're home and and, and I just almost cried. Yeah. But this should have been a warning sign because if uh, trailers are too good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, um, I I know you you did not like the movie. I still enjoyed it. No, oh, no, no. I didn't like it. I, um, I give it um, a C plus or drei plus in German. Yeah, okay. So it's still a watchable movies. I was very disappointed because a reboot of episode four. It has all the main story elements of episode four. It was a reshoot. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I accept it is as a ground laying uh, movie for the character development so i was really interested in what was uh, the the background of ray mm -hmm. because she was too powerful for a first time force user exactly, i was yeah. really interested what was happening with happening with finn as a former stormtrooper and i was really interested in the role of luke because luke was always and will always be my uh, hero mm -hmm. uh, in the my dark personal times luke was really a fixed point something i'm the this might sound cheesy, but some people might may look at, uh, at Captain America or Spider-Man or Batman or whatsoever. But Luke Skywalker was my hero because he was so much pain. He had to make hard choices mm. and did the right thing in the end, even though he suffered a lot. Yeah, very true. Very true. Lost and his hand, his family. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Lost so many friends. And yeah. so this was... Like uh, my my hero, I showed up and, and I tried to step up to during my my childhood, and so seeing him destroyed in the next movie was a personal attack on me. Yeah, the 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 thing for me was was really um, I still enjoyed the movie, but there are some parts that that I really did not like. I I forgave for for Ray being so powerful because I thought it was a setup for the next movie. Um, yeah, really. I I, I forgave uh, Kylo Ren um, because I th I know that Adam Driver is a really good actor, and and I also thought it was a really good setup. Um, oh, I, I liked him in, in episode yeah, seven. I I, I, I think Snoke was well very well done. Uh, well, um, I didn't like him because it was like Emperor 2.0, and 
I, I, I like the idea of Kyle Rain, a wannabe Darth Vader, who's not stepping up to the, his yeah, own expectations, uh-huh. and he's struggling with his emotions very openly, and he's not that ugly like Darth Vader, no scars, mm-hmm. uh, no tainted skin whatsoever. And I liked Adam Driver's performance during all of the three movies. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I, for, for me, Snoke worked uh, because uh, he was... He was such a mystical figure. He, uh, for me, it was not like Emperor 2.0. It, it was uh, the whole setup with with the stone throne. It was much less technical, more mystical to me. And, and not showing up in person, just being that hologram in the movie. Um, it gave like it, in episode 5? Yeah, exactly. It was like this mystical background, <laughs> um, which, which was really well done. And yes, of course, the movie took so much from episode 4 and 5 it's it's absolutely but uh, for example i hated the the concept of star killer base oh because my. they even say it in the movie it's just a bigger death star yes <laughs> Even um, in the second Death Star was um, largely criticized in, in exactly, 1983 yeah. Yeah, yeah. because it was not a new idea. It was just a slightly bigger Death Star. Exactly. Yeah. It was a rehash. And this was yeah. the rehash of the rehash. So, um, uh, yeah, rehash I, of the rehash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it was still pulled off nicely with, with the whole planetscape of Starkiller Base. And, and the scenes that the Chewie and Han had together were really good. Set design was awesome. Yeah, set, uh, set design, film, cinematography. I mean, JJ yes. is, does make beautiful pictures. Um, beautiful pictures, and yeah. he's a very good DJ doing remixes of exactly. old stuff. Exactly. That's what he's doing all the time. Exactly. He's doing remixes, but he's not telling origin or original stories. Exactly. Yeah. And and that that, but for me the film was still. I forgave a lot of this these flaws in the movie because for me it was like you needed to introduce a new generation to Star Wars and um, for many people it probably was the first Star Wars movie they saw and for this it was okay to introduce yeah. people to the to the genre and then they maybe go back and watch the other movies or something as a starting round, I totally accepted this movie and watched it in, in the following uh, several times. So I think I watched all of the classic movies, the original trivia times, way over a hundred times per movie. And I think I watched The Force Awakens 10 to 20 times or something. Mm-hmm. That's still okay. And um, then I had even higher hopes for the follow-up movie when, I, when Rogue One came into theaters. Definitely. I, uh, let me uh, include. Yep, um, sure. I'm, I'm not watching um, the second, third, or fourth trailer anymore. I'm just walking, watching the first teaser, to be correct, um, because um, I was so disappointed in, in the early 2000s. Um, and then I had the experience of the first Lord of the Rings. Mm. I didn't watch the any trailers and I was so flashed when I went to the movie this mm. movie is so brilliant the first one and I wanted to have this feeling again and again and again watching a movie I didn't know anything or only little mm. so I hadn't had only seen the first teaser trailer of mm. uh, The Last Jedi and I was a bit skeptical but still very optimistic because I heard good things about Ryan Johnson I was interested in Ray's character arc I was interested in, in Finn and Kylo I and, was and, in the and then in, I, in, in the, in and the then, midnight premiere and then for me I saw Rogue One as, as oh the Rogue One movie. yes yeah. true and Rogue One for me I mean the the movie may have had problems in development or what whatever but for me, it, the movie still works and is absolutely brilliant. And I really love the movie. This was a, very, a great surprise. I didn't expect much of this movie. And I was really dropping some tears of joy in the end because I didn't expect a Star Wars movie to uh, free up the emotions I had when I watched the original trilogy in the in the early 80s. Yep, yep. And this movie succeeded in this. I was sitting in this movie... There were so many moments I said, wow, awesome. And, and I felt like 10 years old again. Yeah. And um, what what Ron Howard does so good in, in, in many of, 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 of his movies is that the build-up is so great. Uh, you, you're um, missing. Ron Howard is doing, has done uh, Solo. Ah, so, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It wasn't Ron, Ron Howard. 
Uh, it was the, uh, the the Fast and the Furious guy. I forgot the name. Um, uh, sometimes I'm bad at this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rogue One. Um, I've seen Godzilla prior to this yeah. because uh, Gareth Edwards. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know how good he is, and I watched Godzilla. Many people didn't like the movie. I liked I like, it. I, I liked, liked the it, style. Yeah. Me too. And uh, he has this uh, style. He's not showing anything. He's hiding exactly, something. Yeah. And, and and that's what what comes through in Rogue One so brilliantly for me is that yeah. the movie starts out really slow. I mean, it, has, it has these action scenes and everything, but uh, and and uh, and the br brilliant introduction of director Krennic. Um, exactly. But it starts out really, really so slow, and when it gets to the finale, um, your heart is pumping so hard, and then Darth Vader pops into the scene. I I couldn't believe and, that he he let everyone die. Yeah, I, I exactly, saw. Yeah. I was in the movies, and I said, "I, I can't believe it." He's he, got, he he's killed off him. everyone. Yeah, he's killing everyone. And then, and then this this final scene with Darth Vader it pulled me in so much. I almost cried out in the theater. Don't start it. I was I was so flashed. Even even I liked Grant Moff Tarkin his CGI version. A lot of people hate it, and I said I was sitting in the movie. I was looking at my neighbor. Um, uh, greetings to Sam. He's a former co as a co-worker, former of mine. He is a huge Star Wars fan as I, and I was looking at him. And he was had watched the movies in the in the midnight premiere. I was watching in a Friday evening with him together. So he, for him it was the second time. For me, the first time I was looking at him. How? In the first moment, I didn't realize it was a CGI person. After a couple of moments, I realized that okay, it's CGI, but it was so amazing and it was so daring of them to bring this character alive. I thought he would stand around all the time, only with the back and has only little scenes and, and talking from the dark over or by 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 com or something. Mm. So this other regular ways to show a character which where the actor already has died or changed too much exactly yeah and um i found this so daring i said wow because i was talking about this for many years so there will be a point in the future where we see our old heroes as young actors because of this technology of of cgi mm -hmm. so we will see new movies with look or whatsoever and now we are at this point yeah yeah and so this this movie made me even more hyped to see the last jedi um because it was really good and i thought now i think ryan johnson can pull it off and then of course the last jedi came along in the, into movie theaters and i'm actually showing the lego poster of it <laughs> <laughs> because that, this this is what defines the movie for me. It was a Lego movie. In the first place, you liked it. I clearly yeah, I, 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 this. yeah, I really wanted to love it because the, it has some really good qualities for me. Um, for example, visual the qualities, visual qualities, um, the the throne room fight scene, and then the I whole. Think I think the last Je uh, the last Jedi might be the best looking Star Wars movie of all. Exactly, yeah. It's absolutely brilliant done. I actually also like the performances in the Skype calls between Kylo and, and, and Rey. Best part of the movie, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and but what uh, and I really li wanted to defend the movie, and I think I did with you in, in, in when we had the first talk about several it. Times, yep, several yep, times. Several yep. times. And then I got to see it again. And um, what actually didn't occurred to me when I first watched it was that the opening was so bad. Because uh, I, um, before uh, I watched it the second time, we were we were talking about uh, about Battletech, which we do a lot of times, <laughs> and and uh, you were, like bringing the the Battle of Gettysburg into uh, into a Battletech genre mm -hmm. and set up, and when when you have this all these battle tactics in mind and you see the opening scene um i was so flashed how badly done this is yeah uh, it's absolutely amazing the first thing is you have this this really big ship ship come in and you have uh, a fully loaded uh, ship this or, or multiple ship destroying gun uh, on on the bottom of your ship and 
you have the chance to shoot at the evacuated planet or the enemy fleet, you shoot at the planet. But I could still forgive that because that's drama. I can see it. <laughs> but the next thing that happens, um, what do we always say when, when, when we play battle deck? Flanking, flanking, flanking. Flanking, flanking, flanking. Even yes, if, we, and... if we play like, like uh, Mac Warrior Online, I hear you in my headset say flanking, flanking, <laughs> flanking. <laughs> And and um, I'm actually showing a, a photo you can't see it on on the stream now from from the Battle of Gettysburg, which mm. which shows true uh, troop movements. Yes. And, uh, it oh yes. It shows. Uh, I recognize. Yeah, it shows brilliant. Uh, uh, the the maneuvers, the flanking maneuvers, um, on on the downside uh, on the bottom of the picture. Mm -hmm. And um, to go head to head with with like the the first order fleet and fly in straight on in a 3d environment it <laughs> makes absolutely no sense it makes no sense on land if you watch something like the battle of gettysburg and you can you can watch something even even older like the battle of marathon from the greeks i mean the greeks 500 bc knew um you should flank on land and then you have a 3D environment and you go simply head on into an okay. overpowering fleet. It's so, so dumb. It's amazing. I, for I, I know. This is, so this is Star Wars in the end. It shouldn't be historical accuracy, but there were so many or there are so many flaws and mistakes apart from military tactics. So shooting at the, the base where no one is left and uh, letting uh, the, the cruiser escape the cruiser. The vehicle they are escaping with should be the primary target. Exactly. And uh, starting no fighters when they're entering uh, uh, expectable f uh, hostile system. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just starting the uh, launching them when uh, the single fighter had already destroyed half of the guns and so on and so on. And those cheesy humor. It was even worse than Jar Jar Binks. This uh, um, BB-8 who uh, crushed his head into the panel and and started the, the yeah, guns yeah, again. Yeah. And so forth. It was like. Uh, the first moments and when when Hux was dragged over the floor uh, um, um, uh, when he was criticized and so Hux was really um, um, this menaced demenaced exactly uh, he was he was made a choke off yes he may it was a comic relief at this point and yeah he was not a very strong villain in the first movie in episode seven, but in eight he was just a joke. Yeah. Um, I was in the, in the midnight premiere with my neighbor, and, and when we were on the way to the movies, I was driving the car and said, "Oh, Sandra, I'm, I'm so excited to see the movie." And he was watching over. I was, I saw him uh, turning his head, and he said slowly, "So you didn't hear the interview." <laughs> I was thinking, what was he trying to say? He said, no, I didn't hear anything before, prior to the movie. He said, okay, that might be good. And I thought, what is he trying to say? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't, don't stop it. I don't want to hear anything. I want to see this movie just as it is. I don't want to be... Um, uh, um, want to be prepared or brought to some expectation whatsoever i just want to see great movie and I want to know what happens to all the and where the, those characters come from and they were moving to exactly yeah and after half an hour after luke gave away or threw away his lightsaber the lightsaber of his father over the shoulder like it was uh, a banana mm. and he was drinking this green milk out of this tits of this extreme ugly walrus thing. This was about 30 minutes in the movie. I was thinking of, should I get up and, and go home? Yeah, that, that was, yeah, it was, it was really a crazy portrayal of Luke. Um, and uh, I saw a lot of comments of Ryan Johnson and he said, yeah, well, I had to put him down to build him up for the finale, but I think it was too much putting down. And I think the, even the finale for me, uh, in, in then in the second viewing, it did not work 
because yeah. yes, um, the the idea behind the whole astral or force projection that that he he did um, was not was not so bad, but um, it was just executed really bad. Because so, again, the cinematography the, the, the was was brilliant. It was beautiful to look at, but but how Luke acted with with the whole, hey kid, I'm the most powerful guy and everything. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Actually, Adam Driver was better better off uh, um, playing like the hysterical uh, kid um, than than Luke in this scene. Mm. Definitely. And in the end, uh, there was nothing or not much left to go on for episode nine. And that's the big burden uh, um, episode nine had to shoulder because yeah, yeah. there was Snoke was dead. Luke was dead. Uh, Fesma the resistance, was dead. Fesma was dead. Uh, a second time, by the way, yeah. um, the, the resistance uh, was only 20 people or 12 people or something exactly, in the Millennium yeah. Falcon. Yeah. No one in the galaxy wanted to help them. And of course, even the the First Order uh, lay in ruins. So they had lost most of their fleet. They had lost Dark Killer Base. So prepare, uh, comp compare this to the end of Empire Strikes Back in 1980. You're coming yeah, out of was... the movies. The Empire is at full strength. They are winning this conflict. You got to know the emperor by hologram so you mm. know there's even a bigger guy or more evil guy in the background han solo is kidnapped and brought to the huts luke has devastatingly lost his late cyber lightsaber fight uh, with darth vader he has lost his hand and his lightsaber and the um, uh, the rebellion is on the run even though most of them had escaped from half they in a, in a fleet as a homeless on the run so mm. um this is the setting. You have to get back Han. You have to get a new lightsaber. What is happening to Luke? Is the Empire winning? And uh, what will the Emperor do? And whatsoever. And what is this? Another another chance Yoda was talking about uh, uh, when when uh, uh, Luke left uh, Dagobah. Yeah, exactly. So there yeah. were so many strings to pull on. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think... There were a lot of strings to pull on from the Force Awakens. Yes, but, definitely. But, but, but the Last Jedi did not pull any strings. It, it. it did. It did not do any character development. Uh, besides a little bit of Kylo Ren, maybe. But maybe but yeah, Kylo Ren has a bit has of a character bit of character development. development. But all the rest, zero character development. You have still no idea what's going on with Rey, and. Um, Pretty much uh, 40 minutes of the of the movie, which is the whole Canto Bite stuff, is totally useless, even to the story of this movie. Because the, you could have left off all the Canto Bite scenes, and the movie would still have the same outcome. Yeah, it's like like the first Indiana Jones movie. If Indiana Jones hadn't done nothing, it would have come to the same result. So exactly, but yeah. it was at least good action and good humor. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but this but did, that's bad did, writing. Yeah, but but this did do nothing it was actually really really badly executed and the whole scenes on canto bite were in my opinion really bad the whole thing with the horses was so like uh, i mean i have to do something environmental or something i don't know yes and um um I, and i think actually kelly marie tran is a very good actress if you see her in, in other stuff but she was so badly used and then the bad usage of benicio del toro yeah it's not about the actress the actress did mostly good or exactly yeah. very good i think it was the best performance mark hamill had in in all of his movies yeah he actually was, performance was great yeah yes his performance personal performance is great and and most of the others are too but the story is just bad and flawed and that uh, pains me and I still have the feeling that this was kind of secret agenda of, of uh, Ryan Johnson. He, in another interview way before episode eight, he said, if uh, one half of the audience is coming uh, of the movie and saying it was a great movie and the other one said it was the worst movie I've ever seen, if this situation isn't true, it was not his movie. It mm -hmm. was not. He likes to split 
he he's not someone who takes the audience with him as as a whole. He mm. wants to to break them up, and that's what he succeeded in. And I think maybe he wanted to do something more controversial than Empire Strikes Back because he didn't like this movie when he was a boy um, mm. as well. Mm. And I, I actually like, think like re- I actually re- Revenge of the Johnson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I actually think he did not care about the franchise at all. No. He just wanted to do his thing. He yeah. wanted to include his themes that he thought he wanted to have in this movie. Yeah. Um, um, him killing off Snoke, which I think if for the setup it had in Force Awakens, he could have made a brilliant final villain without the need to bring the Emperor back. Um, and and all that stuff. So, I think this could have been a well-developed movie, also. Um, Definitely. But Definitely. It could have because stayed, the it setups could have been were a, there. A fresh start. It could have been a fresh start. Exactly. Most of the, the people who like the Last Jedi or who don't like the criticism say you always want to see the same movie again and again. No, I don't want to no, see no. see the same movie. But that's why I didn't like what I love Episode Seven. I wanted to see something new. Exactly. And yeah. Even Episode. Eight is just a mix of old scenes. The 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 the, the wh- wh- where the rebellion is fleeing from a planet from a superior force. It's episode uh, five. It's Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Um, the the uh, education by an old Jedi master on a foreign planet far off. It's Dagobah two. And exactly. Yeah. We we have this scene, even the speeder scene on the last planet with the walkers. So he's just remixing it, but making it to the worst. While Abrams is adding something to his remixes and making mm. him at least good action movies, mm. uh, if not good storytelling, but good action movies, um, Ryan Johnson has just nice pictures. The action is not that brilliant and the storytelling is bad. Yeah, very true, very true. So, I and agree. this brings us to episode nine, I guess. Yeah. First, let's let's take a shortcut to Solo. Oh, Solo, Solo. Okay. Because Solo, Solo. came out and and up and, and crashed oh. at the box office. After wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Before Solo, when, when I, I watched uh, episode eight in, in the in the midnight premiere, I couldn't sleep until six or seven in the morning. I was so upset. I was so upset. <laughs> I I. I rewatched it definitely a couple of days later in the in English. Uh, first mm-hmm. in German and then in English. I said it's it's slightly better in the English version than in the German one, but it's still a bad movie. Yeah. And so I was so disappointed. I cancelled my subscription for my Marvel. Uh, I didn't want to see anything about Star Wars. I even cancelled my my Star Wars RPG uh, pen and paper pen and paper group because I couldn't stand Star Wars for months. Mm. And then there was Soli. I was really thinking, should I watch this movie? Should I watch this movie? And then Tsam, my my former co-worker, he said, you should do it. You should do it. And then I trust him on his mm. opinion. I went to the movies or to the theaters and I liked it. Yeah, me too. I, I know the, the, the this, this movie... Uh, gets a lot of flag for not being that Star Wars, Star Warsy or something. It's I more think Star Wars or, or Rebels than yeah. the uh, typical Star Wars. Exactly. Yeah. I think I think for me the movie worked. It was uh, it was the most space westerny movie. For Definitely. Me. Uh, I think it took some parts of it uh, out of out of uh, one of my favorite sci-fi uh, shows on TV from Firefly. Mm-hmm. Um, with with the gunslinger scenes that it has, yep. and and that that works for me. And and still the the empire is is portrayed in a really menacing way in the, with this prison camps and and everything and the, and the oppression, which is I think is well done. Mm-hmm. Um, the Wookies are port- portrayed really good in in my opinion. Yes, there of course there are some cheesy comic relief droid scenes in there. But, and yes, of but course. This, now, now we are uh, at Ron Howard. Feministic touch uh, to yeah. L3. Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, but that's also the style of Ron Howard. He has a lot of, in a lot of his movies this comic relief, and, and most of the time it works. And for me, it, know, it didn't bother me. Do you know his so daughter? Do you know his daughter and what she did about her work? Uh, no. His, do- his daughter is an actor too. She oh, okay. played in, in Terminator as the love interest or the wife of John Connor. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, and she's a director, meanwhile, um, and she directed the fourth episode of uh, Mandalorian. 
Oh, great, great. And in my opinion, it's um, the second worst <laughs> episode of the whole show. <laughs> the finale, the last one, yeah. I don't, I hate the finale. And the fourth one, it's not that bad. Um, yeah. I didn't like it. It was uh, too feministic, and and the women are saving us all, and and so well, very tendency, uh, tendency. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but, but, but coming back to I, Solo, I, I really enjoyed yeah. the movie. It was for me, it was a like a buddy western movie. Yeah, the chemistry between Woody Harrelson and Orden Ehrenreich, I, I it would fit it perfectly. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah, it was good chemistry. I did not, I actually did not think that as, as anyone else than than um, Harrison Ford could play Han Solo, but it worked out for me. Yeah, it worked for me. Yeah, yeah it, it really worked for me. So, and especially in the German uh, voice, uh, the German voice of, of Han Solo in Solo, as of Ein Ehrenreich, the German voice is very similar to the um, uh, original voice of Han Solo. The guy is too old by now, so you can hear this. When, when you age, you have this, um, I don't know how to put it. Uh, it's like... Oh, oh, oh. It's a rougher uh, voice, yeah. Yes, a rougher voice. You can can have this voice with a twenty year old Han Solo, mm. but they found someone in German who sounds almost like the voice he had in nineteen seventy seven. And I was sitting in the movie and said, "Whoa!" Like like it was uh, with um, 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 Grant Moff Tarkin. So mm. it's not mm. real. So they have did they digit. Uh, uh, manipulate this voice of the old voice actor or, but it's a different person but it sounds almost like the old one mm. yeah and so for me it was as I said it was not like the best movie in the world but for me it worked and it was a fun movie and I rewatched it on, on Blu-ray now and, and yeah for me it's 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 a fun Star Wars movie and um, it almost made made me made my uh, like pain from the last Jedi go away to at least a little bit. Yes, it was a painkiller, definitive, uh, definitely. Don Glover as Lando Calrissian, I love him. Yeah, that that was an awesome performance. I love him. He I was the, a single character. He was awesome, yeah. and I like the action too and the conclusion. And I really hope to have a, a second part with uh, Darth Maul uh, as the main villain. I was really hoping for it, and. Um, because, but because of the backlash of the fans, um, um, and uh, maybe uh, uh, a Star Wars uh, um, uh, a hiatus, yeah, the yeah, Müdigkeit, uh, yeah. Uh, fatigue, fatigue. Thank you, the the Star Wars fatigue, and many of my uh, friends didn't even know that this movie was coming out in May of that mm, year. So yeah. they said, "What's another Star Wars movie?" The, the last one just uh, was released recently. I said, "Yes," and I think it was just a bad timing for this movie. And so the the next part was killed. I was really hoping to see more of uh, uh, Crimson Dawn and 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 mm-hmm. uh, Darth Maul. And, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Kira, Emilia Clarke, and of course Han Solo and 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 Lana Calrissian. Yeah. But then, of course, this led us into Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> what did you expect from this movie before it was released? I actually did expect very little because I actually hated the trailers. Um, mm-hmm. But then I thought that actually hating the trailers is maybe a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I, I, without knowing, I, I went I went to the movies uh, with with my neighbor, who is also a really big Star Wars nerd, uh, yeah. and and his wife, um, and watched the movie. And the best analogy I heard was actually from you when we talked about it uh, on 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 uh, the Teamspeak uh, the day after Teamspeak, yeah. or the Discord. Um, that. When you when when your daughter brings home uh, an F bomb uh, of of a test uh, for her pre finals, and then you get get uh, like B at the finals, you're really satisfied. Or even a C. Or so, even a C, yeah. Especially when you're uh, when you had a fight after the F. So exactly, it was yeah. really distance and it was really disrupted the the relationship. And you expect another F or maybe a maximum a D or, or E, um, and she brings home a C oh, or C plus. Yeah. It, it feels like an A. So yep, yep. this was it for me. And hey, thanks, um, Kyrus, for following. Sorry. <laughs> hi. 
Um, and I didn't buy my ticket for the movie. I was there. I don't know. It was the not not the midnight premiere. Was because I was so disappointed. But one or two days later, I think one day later, and I bought it the same day or the day mm-hmm. before. That's how I how long I waited. It was just one ticket. I went there alone. I don't want to oh, have anyone with me because yeah. during the midnight premiere of episode A, I had my neighbor with me. He was sitting at a different place, and I was. Um, if I went, st- stood up and went home, I should have informed him and then taken with <laughs> me because I was driving the car. So I wanted to be, if this movie sucked, I could, I should have the chance to get up and, and go home. Mm, yeah, yeah, me too. That's why I went initially alone and it was like by, yeah. by incident that I bumped into my neighbor. <laughs> um, and, um, but uh, like you said, the movie was, pulled it off to like... Uh, take up the the missing strings and mm. and pull them together i still think the movie could have been at least 30 minutes longer because it felt very rushed yeah because of episode 8 so yeah, that's yeah. The, the the deal we have to accept this so i i really accept the first hour the first hour is very rushed but after this the time um is has the right speed, the right rhythm. Mm. It, it's getting good. And exactly, some yeah. people argue about some points bringing back the Emperor. I didn't like it either. I, I would have preferred to have Snoke. And my favorite would have been him, the Darth Plagueis, the, mm. the, the teacher of, 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 uh, um, of Palpatine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the book, by the way. It's one of the best expanded universe uh, books in the in the past uh, ten years. Yeah, the Plagueis book is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I it agree. gives uh, 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 um, Palpatine more depth, mm. and of course, Plagueis is an interesting character. I would have loved to see him, and I think most of the people who only saw the Star Wars movies would have been totally surprised because they didn't know. Uh, uh, Plagueis, they just heard once the name in episode 3 and nothing more. Yep, exactly. So this would have been the perfect story arc in my opinion. Um, but bringing the Emperor back I think was the best in this dire situation. And yeah, I because think J.J. Abram did a good job. I think introducing a new villain would have been too hard. Too much, yes. It was, would have been too much. So he had to bring the... It, it was like a no-win situation. He had to bring back the Emperor, in my opinion. Um, and Kylo Ren couldn't be the, 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 the boss uh, uh, enemy because he was beaten by Ray two times so exactly, far. Yeah. So he was, he was on a losing streak. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and um, for me, um, what really worked is I read the, the novel for The Rise of Skywalker. Mm. And of course, you get some additional scenes in the novel that you don't get in the, uh, that maybe were because of pacing deleted from the movie. But I, I hope think for the director's cut. I really I, I hope, hope for the director's I, I hope cut. I hope so too, because for me, one really defining uh, there was two really defining scenes in the novel. And uh, did did you read the novel? No, no. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll sh- explain this uh, as short as I can. Um, in the novel, the first scene uh, that, that really defines is it, um, uh, Kylo tries to probe Palpatine's mind when he, he first sees him on Exegol. Right. And um, he gets the impression and he kind of says, his, says it in his inner voice um, that he knows that this Palpatine is not Palpatine, it's a clone of Palpatine. And there have been like this essence transfer from the uh, from the Death Star to a, to a clone, but the clone is failing, and that's why he's on this life support. Mm-hmm. And uh, because the the huge immense uh, dark power that was needed to do the essence transfer basically is destroying the clone body of Palpatine. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, interesting move. This is a very interesting move, and I think this was some kind of backstory that uh, even made the whole Palpatine's backstory better for me and why he did not show up earlier because he had problems with his clone body and he had to work uh, in mysterious ways to get Kylo on his side. Clone bodies. Yeah, genau, clone body. <laughs> and, and the second really redeeming scene for me was in the movie at the end, which was 
in my opinion, really well done with all the voices of the Jedi. And that you hear, uh, even you hear uh, um, Kyle Katarn, you hear uh, Ahsoka, and, and you hear a lot of Jedi that I would not have expected to be in there. Um, but in the in the novel, you get the impression that Ray, s Ray sees all them. All yeah, them. this was the hope for a lot of people talked about this, and the expectation is that the, this scene, this scene with all the characters, is out there somewhere, mm -hmm. and hopefully will be in the director's cut. So I would even see the three hours version, and like the Phantom edit for Episode One. I don't know if you know uh, this. There is a professional cutter uh, or editor in in uh, yeah, yeah, I know, Los Angeles yeah. who did this uh, Phantom cut in the early two thousands. And I really hope for such a cut for episode seven, eight, and nine, nullifying eight in, for the most part, and making a new trilogy of seven, eight, and nine. Mm -hmm. Seven could be the same mostly, and eight has to change the most drastically. And in the following, on place to episode nine. So mm -hmm. this would be my dream as a fanboy. But yeah, we yep. we, we see. And it has for me some really uh, awesome scenes in episode nine. Are I, I mean, I really love Lando Calrissian and his presence on the screen. Is even though he has not so many scenes, it's really amazing. He's just such a lovable character. <laughs> and um, for me, even Ray works in this movie now. Much I better. Mean, yes. It's it's, it's still not it, too little character development too late. At least she gets. But she some, gets yes. some. Yeah, but she gets something, and that's that's also good for me. Um, it's it's okay for me that she's a Palpatine. Yeah, um, what's actually in the novel, uh, which is also not in the movie, is that the son of Palpatine is actually um, not his um, like biological son with a woman, but it's a clone. It's, it's a Palpatine a clone. clone. Oh, this and he was an so term, and yeah. he was so disappointed in his son that he had no force powers because he cloned himself and he he had he had like this clone with zero force powers um that he like wrote him off and let him marry this woman and and whatever happens uh, this is an, an unusual move for he would have liked to kill his clone because it was a clone of him so with his face and so i would have expected uh, puppetine to to kill him on sight but somehow uh, some nurse or whatsoever yeah, um, you 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 get the feeling from how it's portrayed in the novel that uh, the boot has no regard for the fly and if it if the fly flies off it have, has flown off all right. This, so, maybe you can can do this better, but it's the 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 idea having in a clone without force power. I I like this and having the emperor back. I mean, did you ever read the comics uh, Dark Empire? Yeah, yeah, of course. And I I have, I think, I have I them in the shelf, and and the the of one of my favorite works. And even as if it, if it, it's uh, the expanded universe, uh, I like this move in general. So this is yep. okay for me. For me too. For me too. I really liked, enjoyed the Dark Empire storyline, and 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 also leading into into uh, into Dark Palpatine when 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 he turns uh, Luke to the dark side in in the in the legend books. Works mm. for me. I really love definitely storylines. So so J J Abrams, I criticized him a lot uh, for for uh, the the rehash of Episode Four, and um, I'm not a Trekkie or a Trekker. Um, but I know some uh, real huge Star Trek fans and how they suffered from his Star Trek version. Mm -hmm. It was much more Star Wars than Star Trek. Exactly. And for me, it was fun movies. It was going like to the movies and having popcorn and, and a drink and seeing this action and enjoying the characters. I li really liked the new Captain Kirk and, and Spark and so on. But I di totally understood why they felt he had broken up the story and the universe and that's the same thing that happened to star wars and i never expect, expected this from jj abrams because i thought he was a real star wars fan no he's not a fan of the star wars core he's a fan of the lightsaber flashy action mm, exactly yeah. yeah yeah true hey sven nice that you are on the on the on the stream yeah and my partner here is is oliver storyteller um Big Star Wars nerds, and of course we are talking <laughs> Star Wars today. <laughs> yeah. So this this has been on going on for a while, and you can watch the the review uh, replay of the episode now, 
then on YouTube I will send you a link uh, when I, when I see you on Teamspeak. <laughs> yeah, um, and but for me he like JJ pulled it off to the best he could do. It was was uh, yeah. like the best he could do with the movie was to end it like this. And, and I'm thankful. It off. I'm grateful yeah. for this because uh, Star Wars was already completely broken, and now they fixed it. It, it has the chance to survive. Uh, and Mandalorian is a good step into the right, is the right step into uh, the good direction. And of course, uh, we have season seven of Clone Wars now. I really like it, and so mm-hmm. there's a chance that this will uh, move on. Okay, yeah, yeah. you want you to Mandalorian as well. Sure, sure. Let's talk about Mandalorian in the final. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, to wrap this most, up. Yeah. The, the best thing about Mandalorian, in my opinion, is um, uh, the the director of the second and the, the seventh episode. Uh, Mary Cho, I think is her name. Yeah, absolutely um, amazing. I love those, this episode. Yeah, my favorite episode. And yeah. she uh, is supposedly the director of the Kenobi TV series, If It's Coming. Yep. She's the main yep. director of uh, Kenobi, and that's the good news. Yeah, that's 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 really amazing. And um, what's really amazing for me is um, I never thought after Darth Vader um, that someone wearing a complete suit could act well. Yes. Because um, some people say that well, it was da- good da- uh, done well with Jango Fett and Boba Fett, but for me they had very few scenes. And um, when, and even in Rebels, when Sabine wore her helmet in an animated character, it, yeah, she had to take off her helmet to express something. But Pedro Pascal in The Mandalorian, he has such a presence on screen. For me, absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, by the way, I have to correct myself. It's not Mary Cho, it's a Deborah Cho. Ah, Deborah Cho. Yeah, yeah. Deborah Cho. Or the Deborah guy. Yes, that's yeah. right. So yeah. I really love her work, and I really hope she's uh, setting the bar high with Kenobi. Exactly. If it comes. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, and it uh, it it is coming. They uh, actually got news. Uh, I think yesterday it was on, or the day before it was on the Joe Campia show that Jedi is again proceeding. Uh, uh, Obi Wan is is again uh, proceeding uh, with with development, and they want to start shooting in 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 fall now. Because of the whole Corona thing, so that's that's really nice. And I think it was a, I think the Mandalorian was a great introduction um, for me. Baby Yoda really works. Yeah, I, that's I don't. True. I never expected this. I never expected never... this. I don't know where Filoni is going <laughs> with this. So, and and Favreau. So I don't know where they are going with with the character, because obviously he didn't show up in in episode seven, eight, and nine. Um, Give it to Ryan Johnson. He's doing some interesting uh, things with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But works really well. The character, the Mandalorian, is amazing. Uh, even the the sidekicks he gets stepping forward are really good. Very well mm-hmm. done. I have spoken. <laughs> yeah, and I have spoken. This and, is a brilliant line. Yeah, absolutely. I heard amazing. it a lot since then. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's, it's a really good setup. And what, what makes me really hopeful for season two is um, that they cast Ahsoka. Yes, I so, like the character. So she should move on. Yeah. We will see Ahsoka in a live action series, which is really amazing for me. As an elder yeah. person by now. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So she survived the Clone Wars, she, the rebellion, the rise and fall of the Empire. So she should, should be a battle-hardened uh, woman. And I'm, I'm interested how she has turned out to be after, after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And uh, there is rumors uh, that um, because we see the dark saber in the last episode, I hope yeah, I don't Mandalorian spoil anything. Yeah, saber, yes. Yeah, we see, we see the dark saber um, that um, Bo Katan, played by Katie Sackhoff, will be in season two, uh-huh. and this would be really amazing for me. This would be great yes. because because this is the way. <laughs> 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 um, that that would be really amazing. I would really love that. So, 
The only yeah. thing I've heard so far I'm not happy with is uh, um, the gunslinger, the episode where they have this uh, the the headhunter uh, mm -hmm. uh, Toro Kalikan or what was his name. Uh, yep, yep. I think. So, I, I no no no. Well, yeah, Kalikan, and and she died. And this was a surprising move. I like the scene because mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. daring again. And I heard she survived it and will be back in episode two because she turns oh, okay. out to be a fan favorite. This is always like, oh, mm. dramatically let someone die. And then he is, oh, surprises. Yeah, he that's, that's not again. good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's one of, uh, uh, that's two moves I don't like is to bring yeah. someone back from the dead just because they were good. Um, yeah. the, the only series where that worked for me was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> and... Um, I think the vampire. Oh, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's time. And um, and what I also don't like most of the time, and what's my what's actually my my biggest flaw for something like Avengers Endgame, which some people like, is time travel. So I'm very thankful that in episode nine, um, uh, JJ didn't do some yeah. time travel stuff or something and introduce time travel into into Star Wars because there I would have hated that. Yeah, but I would have hated that with a fiery yeah. passion. Uh, uh, Ray is traveling through the time and, and collecting all the heroes from the past and the future together yeah. to fight Palpatine in the Holy presence. crap, that would have been bad. Yeah. No, please don't do it. <laughs> and, and so that's that's for me two things that are not really working and I hope they don't do it. So that's, no, no, no. This is the only thing where I forgive Star Wars for bringing someone back, like I said earlier, was, was Darth Maul. So that, that was yes. okay for me because he was so underused in episode one. Yeah. that this was really great but yeah i think they should leave it at that yeah true yeah yeah and i think this is a great uh wrap up for today's talk um and yeah, some some final remarks that you want want to do on on, on this on the show um uh, there's hope again a new hope <laughs> for exactly me. Yeah. Uh, thanks to mandalorian um, I'm really hopeful that we move to a fresh start. Um, Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian uh, as itself was different to what Star Wars was before, uh, which I want to see and many other peoples. Um, hopefully the fan base will unite again, not as one big harmony family, but that we get on common ground and, and uh, accept each other and, and their opinions. So this would be my uh, wish for the future for Star Wars. Yeah, couldn't have said it any better. So we'll we'll end it at that. Thanks everyone for watching uh, the live stream. Thanks for everyone watching on on YouTube. Um, if you like this content, please leave us a follow uh, and uh, or a subscribe. And um, we'll we'll bring you a lot more content like this in the future. This was only the second show uh, we we did so. Um, Thanks everyone for watching and I hope Oli you will we will be back on stream with me for another topic. Sure. And see you all next time. Bye bye. May the force be with you.